This is a tutorial for Unreal Editor 2 for the original Unreal Tournament Game of the Year edition. In this video, we will take a look at The Trap. This is a map called DM Cybrosis 2 from Alan Willard. And first of all, let's show you an in-game clip of The Trap. So here you have a basic room, nothing fancy. And when you come down here, you can see that there's a hint that something is up because you have all of these blue flashing lights and everything seems to be okay but something is off. If you step on this button it activates an electrical trap and then you get killed. So the idea here is that if you know that a player is coming for the damage amplifier then you would be waiting up here and you step on this button and that would activate all that electricity and you would get and the person here would get killed. So there's a lot going on here in the official map and I will very quickly run through some of these parts but this can be reduced to some very simple basics. The most important thing is this special event. So note that the tag is called Kill Trappers, so there's got to be a trigger that's going to hit this tag. The second thing that you should note is under Object, Initial State, it's a Damage Instigator. And under Special Event, it will do 5500 damage. This damage string doesn't actually work, I've tried this in the game, so if anybody knows how to get this to work, please send me a message. And then the damage type is called special. So this damage instigator means that the person who triggers it kills themselves. So this is not the same thing as the pressure zone tutorial. This trigger is killing the person who activated it. That's why you have all of these extra pieces to work around that fact. So remember that there were a bunch of lightning bolts and lightning clouds and what they actually are are these movers. So as you can see I have one lightning beam this way and then a perpendicular lightning beam this way and then these domes that you see here are the extra lightning clouds that we saw in the video. So all of these are movers and the move time is zero so that when they are triggered they will instantaneously appear in the right spot. So let me just click on one so you can see what I'm talking about. I've already covered this in my breaking glass tutorial so I will put a link to that but I will very quickly show you one sample mover the move time is zero and the stay open time is three. And since they're lightning beams, you need to put a lightning sound. And this is from the ambient modern package. It's a looping sound and it's called Big Electric 7. So you basically fill in all five fields with the same sound. And so when this thing moves, it will carry the sound with it. Finally, you need a tag, and this tag is called Beam1. So let's go back to our map. I mentioned that this special event really is all you need, plus one trigger, to trigger the effect of killing a player who activates. But if you want all the extra stuff, which is the movers, the lightning beams and everything, then you're going to need to have a dispatcher, which I've also covered in a previous tutorial, and I will link to that. So here you will see that the dispatcher is going to set off a whole bunch of events. Beam 1 and Beam 1A, those are the movers for the lightning, the actual lightning with their sounds. And here it's the triggers, the Trig Kill 1 and the Trig Kill 1A, those are the triggers that activate the special event which will kill the player. And the reason why they show up twice is because 
the first time you see trig kill one, you are activating the event. And then the second time you see it over here, you are deactivating it. And the reason why you do that is because you don't want the, the death trap to be activated all the time. You want the death trap to be activated only when the button is pressed. Everything else you see here is eye candy. So for example, there's a nice texture here on the pillars to show you that there's something fishy going on. There's these nice little brushes here again with a little wavy blue texture to show you that it's something's amiss. And I'm really not sure why the mapper put this thing. This is called a fear spot. And basically it scares the bots away from standing there. So no idea why that's there and no idea why this is here because this is for domination. And actually this is a deathmatch map. So it's not even a domination map. So the only thing that I can think of is they wanted it for the zone, this zone to have a name, uh, to have an area. Uh, or maybe to entice bots to come here, but then there's a fear spot. So again, if you know why there's a fear spot, you can send me a message for that. So let's take a look at this piece by piece, and I'm going to show you a simple example first, and then the more complex example. So as I mentioned, there are really only two components you need to make a death trap if you just want the death trap to be there all the time. So here is your special event which you get by coming to the actor class browser triggers special event and then let me click on this right click on the special event to see the properties and under object initial state it's a damage instigator and then under the special event itself you put in however much damage, so I put 5,500 because that's what they had, but this could be 4,000 or 10,000 or whatever. And this damage string, which I tried to do in my map, but this damage string doesn't work. And then I put in a special damage because it's not lava, it's not any other type of damage, it's basically a, a special damage. And then this message will work. So I put here, you are zapped. So this will work when you put that in. Finally, you need an event tag, and here I called it zap kill. So that's the first piece. You just need that, and this can be anywhere in the map. And here is the trigger to go with that special event. In this case, I just did a proximity, but it could be anything. So this is a proximity. So when the player hits this trigger, it's going to activate. It is initially true. So it's going to work right away. Normal trigger, nothing fancy there. And here under events, the event, which is zap kill, matches the tag of the special event. So there you are. You'll only have two pieces that you need to do. Let's take a look at it in the game. So here is my trap. And as soon as I walk into it, and you can see the message at the top as well. So that's pretty basic. Now let's do what they did in Cybrosis. So here I have just basically two solid brushes with a little bit of a light uh, texture on there. Nothing fancy. Here is the damage amplifier, which will entice players and bots to come here. Here is that proximity trigger. And there you see again the same thing. The event is zap kill. That matches the tag of the special event. But now I'm adding a tag as well. And the reason for that is because I don't want it to be active initially. I want another trigger to trigger it and to turn it on and to turn it off. So that's important. Here, for initial state, you have to change this to other trigger toggles and that means that there's going to be another trigger which turns it on and turns it off and finally here under B initially active you are now going to change this to false 
So when the map starts, this is actually this trap is actually not going to work. Now in this case, just for simplicity, I made this a shootable trigger. Now remember, in the official map, it is a button. And so it's the button that triggers instead of shooting something. So here I have a trigger. I made it a TT shoot. I made a repeat trigger time of two seconds so you can't just spam this trap infinitely. You have to wait two seconds every time before you can shoot the trap again. So there's a repeat trigger time of two. And so when you shoot this trigger, it's going to activate my dispatcher. Here is the dispatcher. And to get a dispatcher, same thing, you go into actor class browser, triggers, dispatcher. So here's my dispatcher. And the tag of this is disp1, and that matches the event of this trigger here. Then here in my events, I have bolt1. That is the tag for the mover. It's my lightning bolt mover. Then the first trig1 will activate this trigger, this one here, and the second trig1 will turn it off. So the first one turns it on, kills the player, and then turns it off. And as you can see here under delays, I have a little bit of a delay only just to show you but basically I put 0.5 seconds before you get killed and then 2.5 seconds before it gets deactivated again and can be reused again. So remember 0.5 seconds, 2.5 seconds. So to recap, if you walk in, this trap will not be activated. You can easily take the damage amplifier and run away. However, if somebody were to shoot this trigger, it's going to set off this dispatcher, and the dispatcher is number one, going to move my mover into place, which is a lightning beam, and number two, it'll turn on this trigger, which will kill a player if they're standing in this radius. And of course, in this case, I made the radius very small. As you can see here, the red circle. And how you get that is you go into this gray toolbar, right click, actors, radii view. And that's how you're able to see the radius of that trigger. So it's a very small radius. The player really has to be just standing right there. Last thing is I'm going to show you the mover. In this particular case, the mover is what we call a volumetric brush, which is over here on the left toolbar and it's basically two sheets together in one. And the texture that I used is the one that I got from the official map. So you open a texture called ISVFX, and then you grab this energy bolt texture right there. But there are many different lightning bolt textures in other packages, so you just have to experiment and pick one that you like. So this was a volumetric brush, which I made into a mover. Let me right click on that to show you the properties. Here is the tag, which is bolt one, which was in the dispatcher that I showed you. Here is your mover. The mover has a move time of zero and a stay open time of two seconds. And here's my favorite, ignore when encroach. And then under object initial state, I made it a trigger open timed because it's going to be a trigger that activates it. And then under moving sounds, I use the same looping electric sound for everything. Closed, closing, moving, open, opening. Everything is the same sound. So let's take a look at this in the game. So here is my room. And I've got these two pillars here with my light texture. Everything's good. I can easily take this amplifier. I'm good. However, if I shoot this trigger and then walk into the trap, 
So that is the summary of what you need to do to replicate the trap in DM Cybrosis 2, except there's going to be more of these types of movers to show all the, the lightning beams and the lightning clouds. You'll need more of those. And here, I have only one trigger for this area because it's large enough to cover this area of where the lightning beam is going to be. But if you're going to do a more elaborate lightning beam and lightning cloud, you will need to place multiples of these triggers. Just use the duplicate function and create multiple ones to cover the length of your lightning beam or the area of your lightning cloud.